Welcome back to the Civil Rights Lawyer Channel. Do you remember the case that was in the news where the... I remember the case. Good morning. What happened? I, was, we had, I had the green light. Like, all the tough you up here. And so when I was... Well, then you went, do we have an officer that's pulled out there? You know, because black was green. Is this your car? Yes. I mean, I know what happened, but you can tell me. I already watched the camera what happened. Oh, okay. Thank you, dude. That's all good. Right. The accident already happened, so why are we arguing about okay, it? Okay, man, what's up? You can go in your car, actually. All right, I did find you at fault in the I was, accident. My father, I was in the red light. And I was, I, my, my light was green. Why are you screaming at me? I'm not screaming. I'm saying it was not my fault. He ran into my truck. So I need you to sign this ticket right here on the X. But you're going to sign this ticket right here before I get my sergeant out here. No, no, okay? No, no, no. You're going to sign this ticket or I'm going to take you to jail. I didn't do that wrong. Who are you screaming at? I told I, you once, lower your voice. My voice you're not, you're my not going to scream at me. This man ended up losing his life, and the police officer ended up losing his job all over something that should have been a non-issue, and that's just this man refusing to sign the citation, and this police officer, therefore, feeling it necessary to arrest the guy, tase him, and put him... You're going to sign this ticket, or I'm going to take you to jail. I suggest you sign the ticket. Then you can talk to my sergeant or whoever you want to talk to, your priest, your wife, I don't care. But you're going to sign it right here. Here you go. So take a look at the footage. I'll show you what I think is relevant to see. Then at the end, I'll give you my thoughts on up, what constitutional violations occurred here. Johnny Holman, a church deacon, was driving home from Bible study at his daughter's house and taking dinner to his wife when he ended up colliding with another vehicle as he was turning across a busy street west of downtown Atlanta. According to a previous... Yeah, so he had a car accident, you know, and the officer says he was at fault. And, you know, the, the guy's a little bit upset about, you know, the officer saying that he was at fault. We never know. We don't know what happened because we didn't see the accident. Uh, so usually you just go ahead and handle that, you know, according to everything. But threatening somebody, threatening threatening to take somebody to jail versus over not signing the ticket. I don't know. But even then, why would you taste it? Like, previous police statement about this incident, so which occurred on August 10th, an officer was dispatched to the scene of the accident and determined that Mr. Hallman was at fault. He tried to issue a traffic citation to Hallman, but the driver was, quote, agitated and, quote, uncooperative and resisted when the officer tried to arrest the driver, according to the police. Get out of the way. Let's see. Just checking to see if you have any officer that clean you down the hands any home. Morning. What happened? I was. We had, I had the green light. Like, all the tough you up here. And so when I was making. Well, then I went. Do we have an officer that's pulled out there? You know, because black was green. And I was checking the back all the way up here. I got green. What call it? Trying to hit me on the shot right here. We have our own turf here. Come pull your car up right here. Come pull your car up right here. Is this your car? Yes. I mean, I know what happened, but you can tell me. I already watched the camera what happened. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. You said I could tell you one? You want to? Yeah. I so, all right. So See, that's right where we turn. mess up. I that's where we mess up right there. I, I, if y'all catch that, when he said, I already saw on the camera, but you can tell me anyway. At that point, he's telling you it's not really no point in, in saying nothing. But if you want to say something anyway, okay. But at that point, he, what, what he was saying to me that what I heard him saying, saying was, I don't really care what you tell me now, but you can go ahead and talk if you want to. So and, instead of instead of trying to explain, it, he if he says he saw what happened, he saw it on camera or whatever, 
I would ask them, well, what did you see? And and then you work from there versus trying to, you know, explain when he he's already telling you like he's not trying to, you know, hear nothing. But I would at, at that point, I wouldn't even. Some cops, you got to read like you got to know, like, OK. Is it really is it really worth my time trying to waste my breath explaining in something to them or would it be best to just handle this a different way? I wouldn't have said nothing to him at that point. Once he told me that he already saw what happened and, you know, you can tell me if you want anyway, but it's like I already, you know, kind of had my mind made up. So it's, at that point, there's no point in talking. So as soon as basically he just essentially all he did was cut the cut it way too sharp it just ran right into my car as a matter of fact like you see the reason that it skirts all the way i wasn't even going i was essentially like driving like two three miles per hour and I like come on the car is already fucked up there you go come on I want to there you go turn it right in there So yeah, so like, um, let's say there's traffic in terms of, like I'm basically essentially just making a right turn. Mm-hmm. And I saw the car, he wasn't even looking at me. I even tried to go to my He just cut way too sharp and just ran right into my car. Okay. The accident already happened, so why are we arguing about it? You can go in your car, actually. You can go in your car. You can go in your car. You got to drive last night? Yeah. Why are you talking to him now, sir? I should be able to get there myself. 11 on 4. Can you start me at 85, please? Right. It's the case number. Um, your car, that tire is messed up, so you're gonna be able to drive it off. So I'm gonna tell you. Okay, but uh, this is where your car is gonna go on Jonesboro Road. Um, use that case number, give it to your insurance. Yeah, it was him. So. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Somebody over there could be recording. I can't believe nobody recording this right now. All right, man. Case number for you. All right, I did find you at fault in the. I was, in my fault. I was in the red light. I was, I, my, my light was green. You cut your turn short. No, no, I didn't turn. I couldn't, I couldn't turn no wide and what it did. You, you, you kept coming at, at me. It was my fault. Why are you screaming at me? I'm not screaming. I'm saying it was not my fault. He ran into my truck. Okay. You see right, right, right here. All right. So I need you to sign this ticket right here on the X. Okay. I'll get my sergeant for it, but you're still going to sign this ticket. That's fine. But you're going to sign this ticket right here before I get my sergeant out here. Okay. You're going to sign this ticket. I'm going to take you to jail. So you got a court date of the 4th of October, 2023 at 8 o'clock. All right. It's not a state of admission or guilt. Just saying that you plan on coming to court and paying the fine beforehand. You can come to court. You can come to court and fight the case. I didn't do nothing. No, I didn't do nothing. I didn't do nothing wrong. Who are you screaming at? I told you once, lower your voice. This is this is the time that a cop should use his de-escalation skills. He, I'm sure he knows this guy is not getting ready to like physically attack him, just because he's upset about the car, the parking ticket. This is the time where you, you know, you just talk to him like, hey, you know, it's. It's the way he's going about it. it. That's that's why this this man is not coming down. Uh, this cop is just he. To me, they just heartless and just cold. Like, you know, he don't. 
the way he was talking to him, telling him to go away in his car, and the way he just approached everything is just all bad. It's it's like you know, it's just all bad. He he's not a he doesn't seem like a good person. Voice. My voice you're not, you're My not voice gonna scream at me. It's freedom of speech. He, this 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 is not what you call somebody yelling at you like in an aggressive way or just be, when somebody feel feel like they didn't do nothing wrong, sometimes they get a little bit a little passionate about that. You know, this officer says, Oh, don't raise your voice at me, like the man really is screaming at him like uh in a in a belittle uh in a belittling way. It's not that. My boss is heavy. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Now you're gonna sign this ticket, or I'm gonna take you to jail. I suggest you sign the ticket. Then you could talk to my sergeant or whoever you want to talk to, your priest, your wife, I don't care. But you're gonna sign it right here. Here you go. Sir, I'm gonna ask you one more time. Sign the ticket. So you, you, you sign the ticket. You just trying to make sign me say the I'm ticket. Something. I'm not guilty. Sign of the ticket. You know what you're trying to make me say. Sign the ticket. Okay, sign I'm gonna sign the ticket. I'm gonna sign the ticket. I'm gonna sign the ticket. I'm sign the ticket. As usual, according to YouTube's guidelines, I am not going to show the violent raw footage, but I will post the full raw clip at the blog post link below at the civilrightslawyer.com. But here's what happens. Um, a struggle ensues, and Officer Kimbrough, who is the officer involved here, takes Mr. Hallman to the ground, uses a taser on him, and then handcuffs him behind his back. Officer Kimbrough then requests EMS when he re realizes that Mr. Hallman is unresponsive. Mr. Hallman was pronounced dead at the hospital. An autopsy determined that the manner of his death was homicide, with the medical examiner saying that heart disease was a contributing factor. After this took place at the scene, Officer Kimbrough told other officers that he struck Holman several times when Holman tried to grab him. Here's what he said. I took him to the ground and stuff, and he started grabbing my hand like he was finna hit me. So I punched him a couple times, tased him, put him in cuffs, the officer can be heard saying. I don't know what's going on with him now. He's still breathing, though. Officer Kimbrough ended up being fired because he did not follow standard operating procedures. The police department said that an on-scene supervisor must approve a physical arrest for refusal to sign a citation. After this fatal incident, the police department made several changes, including revising the standard operating procedures regarding traffic citations and allowing officers to write refusal to sign instead of making arrests, according to the mayor's office, which said it instructed the police department to conduct a top-to-bottom review of this incident and its policies. It's also currently under investigation by the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. Here's yet another example of a police department running defense and getting rid of an officer or throwing an officer under the bus and claiming that it's just because of policy violations. And certainly there probably were policy violations here, but they completely ignore the actual constitutional issue. And that is excessive force in this case. All of this was completely preventable. And it should be the case that you don't arrest somebody because they're upset and they don't want to sign the citation. I mean, sometimes, especially with older people, they may not understand in the heat of the moment that by signing the citation, they're not admitting guilt or accepting liability. First of all, policy-wise, completely unnecessary to arrest somebody because they didn't want to sign the citation. Again, you know who they are. You have their information. Fourth Amendment, excessive force, constitutional violation, absolutely here. If you watch the raw footage, it was completely unnecessary and excessive. Analyzing excessive force, you look at the gram factors. The, the first one is the severity of the crime the suspect is suspected of having committed. Here, not signing a citation following a traffic stop. Absolute uh, low, as, low as you can get on the first gram factor, severity of the crime. Second gram factor, whether the suspect is actively resisting arrest or evading. Now here, this guy wasn't under arrest. He should not have been under arrest. Then when he goes to place him under arrest, um, he does arguably try to pull away, try to resist. He's upset. Still very low on the gram factor scale. 
Um, lastly, the third gram factor, the most important one, whether there's an immediate safety threat to the officer or someone else that requires violence to be committed against this individual. Here, this man was posing no safety threat to anybody. So all three of the gram factors, all very low. So what the uh, police department here is ignoring and refusing to say publicly for liability reasons is that this was excessive force under federal case law, a constitutional violation. And that's absolutely when you're not allowed to tase people. For instance, passive resistance. You know, give me your hand. You're not putting your hand um, behind your back like I'm directing you to. Whether that's true or not, that is passive resistance and you're not constitutionally allowed to tase people. And all the police officers like to think, well, we've all been tased in our training. It's no big deal. It is like electrocuting people and, and some people you're dealing with or older or have medical issues that you know nothing about, such as this guy who had pre-existing issues. And one of the things we learned in law school is, is that you take your plaintiff as you find him. So if, if you end up punching somebody in the head who has eggshell skull syndrome, and that ends up crushing a skull and killing him, you didn't think that would happen. If you're, if you're legally liable for what you did, then you're responsible for killing him, not just what a punch would have done to any regular person. So this was an excessive force case. It's a good thing they fired him, but they should really accept responsibility for the constitutional violation here. So I'll continue to follow this one. No doubt there'll be a lawsuit if one hasn't been filed already. Follow along here and at the blog at thecivilrightslawyer.com. Please subscribe. All right. So... I got it pulled up where they, the original, that's going to show the entire, the entire thing. On the X. Okay. I'll get my sergeant for it, but you're still going to sign this ticket. That's fine. But you're going to sign this ticket right here before I get my sergeant out here. Okay. You're going to sign this ticket. Or I'm going to take you to jail. So you got a court date of the 4th of October. 2023 at eight o'clock. All right. It's not a state of admission or guilt. Just saying that you plan on coming to court and paying the fine beforehand. I, I, you can come to court. I do nothing. You can come to court and fight. I didn't do nothing. Case. No, how much? Jeez, I didn't do nothing. I didn't do nothing wrong. Who are you screaming at? I told I, you once, lower your voice. My voice you're not, you're my not voice gonna scream heavy. at me. My voice is heavy. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Now you're gonna sign this ticket, or I'm gonna take yeah. you to jail. I suggest you sign the ticket. Then you can talk to my sergeant or whoever you want to talk to, your priest, your wife. I don't care. But you're going to sign it right here. Here you go. Sir, I'm going to ask you one more time. Sign the ticket. So you, 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 sign you, the ticket. You just to make sign the ticket. I'm not guilty of sign the ticket. That's what you're trying to make me say. Sign the ticket. Okay, I'm gonna sign the ticket. I'm gonna sign the ticket. I'm gonna sign the ticket. Sign the ticket. Sign the ticket. I cannot sign the ticket. You're acting crazy. I'm not doing nothing. Give me your phone. I'm right here. Give me your arm. I'm right here. Give me your arm. My 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 body already hurts, man. All right. I'm on another unit. You don't care. You don't care nothing about. Hey, how you doing like this? I ain't doing nothing. Man, man. I ain't doing nothing, sir. Why, why you hurt me like this, man? I'm old, man. I'm old, man. I'm not right away. Sign the ticket. Okay, sign the ticket. I'm going to tell you. Put your arms behind your back now. Put your arms behind your back. He's saying sign the ticket. Put your arms behind your back. Well, which one is it? How you gonna tell him to sign the ticket? You throwing him to the ground, pushing him on the ground. Then when you say you're trying to sign the ticket, you pulling it, you grabbing at his arm, and that's why I say, man, it's something wrong with him. And yeah, they fired him, but now he just walking around on the street. Well, at least he he uh I I don't know because you then he'll just go to a different department and it's okay. I this is absolutely ridiculous. For what? All, all for all because he didn't want to sign the ticket. How do you how do you go back 
and tell this story to anybody and feel like you did a good job, like you was a hero in this situation. How do you go to, yeah, man, he wasn't signing a ticket, so uh, I tased him. I didn't know he had heart problems. He ended up, you know, passing away. Well, yeah, man, it's, you know, tasing not really a big deal. I didn't think, but why are you tasing the old man? You could, you couldn't, you couldn't uh subdue an old man without tasting him like come on and it was no reason it was no reason to put your hands on him anyway he committed no crime all you all you had all you had to do was say re refuse to sign and this would have been over with so you see obviously the cop wanted to do this he'd been waiting on this his whole life and how many how many other people have you violated like this? That's that's always what I think. How many other people have has this happened to before this guy passed away? Maybe maybe it's done so so much, but the people didn't, you know, they didn't die, so they feel like okay, well, it's not that bad. Put your arms behind your back. Look at Put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. Okay, please. Put your hands behind your back. Okay, please. I can't breathe. Put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. I'm gonna tell your ass one more time. Put your hands behind your back. Okay, okay. Now! Okay, okay, breathe! 